स्टैंडर्ड फाइव हाउ वी केम टू बी एनवायरमेंटल स्टडीज पार्ट टू चैप्टर नंबर टू हिस्ट्री एंड द कंसेप्ट ऑफ टाइम डिविजन ऑफ टाइम एंड द टाइम लाइन देर आर डिफरेंट मेथड्स ऑफ रिकनिंग टाइम टाइम इज कंटिन्यूस बट फॉर आर कन्वीनियंस वी डिवाइड इट इन टू पीरियड्स द मेथड that we use for reckoning time depends on our purpose for dividing it and the manner in which we do it for example at sunrise we say it is morning now the day has begun at sunset we say it is evening now soon it will be night at the end of the day it becomes dark and it is night this means that we divide the day into two parts day and night our earth rotates around its axis at a certain speed similarly it also revolves around the sun the sun has its own light we receive light from the sun however we see light only in daytime nights are dark how does this happen as the earth rotates around its axis the part of its surface which turns towards the sun becomes bright the part that moves away from the sun moves into darkness the earth takes 24 hours to complete one rotation around its own axis this 24 hours are approximately divided into 12 hours of daytime and 12 hours of night a period of day time and the following night together make one day seven days from monday to sunday make one week two weeks make a fortnight four weeks make a month 12 months make a year in this manner we reckon time in bigger and bigger units one year is followed by another and when 100 years go by a century is completed when 10 centuries that is 1000 years are gone a millennium is completed such a method of dividing time is known as a unilinear division of time common era that means christian era in the unilinear division of time years that follow one after the other are arranged in serial order in history books also a chain of events that follow one after the other is presented in a linear and serial manner for this usually we refer to the common era that means christian era written in short as ce or ad that means anno domini which means in the year of our lord the calendar we use today is based on the christian era now called the common era This era began in memory of Jesus Christ. The first year of this era is the year when it began. It is shown with the number 1. The years after that are indicated by the next numbers in serial order. The first 100 years that is the first century of this era is written as 1 to 100 CE or 1 to 100 AD. The period of the first millennium of this era is written as 1 to 1000 CE or 1 to 1000 AD. Time before the common or Christian era. The period before the common era is known as the time before common era that means BCE or before Christ that means BC. The years of this period are counted and written in reverse order. The first century before the common era began at the year 100 BCE and ended with 1 BCE. Similarly, the first millennium before the common era began at the year 1000 BCE and ended with the year 1 BCE. So, the first century before the common era is indicated as 100 to 1 BCE. and the first millennium before the common era is indicated as 1000 to 1 bce let us look at the some examples of this method of indicating time before the common era or christian era the lifetime of vardhaman mahavir 
is written as 599 BC to 527 BC. The lifetime of Gautam Buddha is written as 563 BC to 483 BC. Measurement of time and methods of measuring time. To measure time is to measure the length of time. We know the following units of measuring time. Second, minute, hour, day, week, fortnight, month, year, century and millennium. A second is the smallest of these units. There are various methods of measuring time in different parts of the world. Of this, the common or Christian era is the most widely used. We generally indicate a particular day by writing the date of that day. The date consists of serial number of that day followed by the name or serial number of the current month and then the serial number of the current year. There are other methods too. We have seen the Christian era begin in memory of Jesus Christ. It is an age-old custom to start a new era to commemorate a special event, as for example, the coronation of a great king. We know that Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj had started a new era or shak known as Rajabhishek Shak in 1674 AD to commemorate his coronation. Shalivahan Shak and Vikram Samvat are two eras that are used in India. The founder of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, migrated from Mecca to Medina. The Hijri era was started to commemorate this event. The Parsi community in India uses the Shahin Shahi era. Historical periods We learned in the first lesson that history is a science that tells us about events that happened in the past. We also learned that every bygone moment makes up the past. The past is the subject matter of history. In a broad sense, the period of history goes back to the time of the birth of our solar system. Our solar system came into being about 4.5 billion years ago. Our Earth is a planet in the solar system. So, it is presumed that the Earth was also formed 4.5 billion years ago. The span of 4.5 billion years since the Earth's formation is a vast period of time. It is not easy to grasp this entire period all at once. It is necessary to divide it into a number of stages in order to understand it better. Therefore, the time in history is divided into two main periods. 1. Prehistoric period 2. Historic period 1. Prehistoric period Prehistory simply means before history. The prehistoric period is the period for which no written records are available by which to write its history. 2. Historic period The historic period is the period for which written records are available, using which we can write history. Scientific methods of measuring time and establishing age, that means dating. We are actually measuring time when we talk about today's date or day of the week, etc. We have seen there are various methods of measuring time. These methods allow us to identify particular day, month or year with respect to an earlier or later day, month or year. For example, if it is June, then we know that the earlier month was May and the next one will be July. If today is the 10th of June, then we can tell that tomorrow will be the 11th of June and yesterday was 9th of June. Thus, when we measure time, we actually measure its length. The events before the beginning of common era are mentioned as having occurred before the common era. Information about some of these events can only be obtained with the help of evidence buried under the ground. This evidence is usually in the form of broken man-made artifacts and fallen structures. 
with the help of this remains and using scientific methods we can determine the time of the events that took place thousands of years ago there are many layers of soils deposited one above the other under the surface of the ground the period of these layers and of the remains found in them cannot be stated definitely in terms of dates however a rough estimate of how many years ago they existed can be certainly be made using scientific methods such as carbon 14 analysis tree rings analysis that means dendrochronology etc these methods are known as dating techniques by using these dating techniques we learn how old the layers of soil and the remains found in them are then we can determine their period approximately for example if the earthen pot is estimated to be 5000 years old with the help of dating techniques we can say that the earthen pot dates back roughly to 3000 bc then we can conclude that the period of the culture to which the pot belongs must be around 3000 bc do you know this 1 billion or 1 abj do you know how many years make up 1 billion years we know that the number we get by writing three zeros after 1 is 1000 and the number that we get by putting four zeros after 1 is 10000 we also know the mathematics behind it 100 into 10 is equal to 1000 and 1000 into 10 is equal to 10000 let us see how the numbers increase further in the same manner 100 into 10 is equal to 1000 1000 into 10 is equal to 10000 10000 into 10 is equal to 100000 or 1 lakh 1 lakh into 10 is equal to 10 lakh or 1 million 10 lakh into 10 is equal to 1 crore or 10 million 1 crore into 10 is equal to 10 crore or 100 million 10 crores into 10 is equal to 1 abj or 1 billion willard libby 1908 to 1980 dating methods carbon 14 is a radioactive element that is found in the bodies of all living organisms after the death of an organism the carbon 14 in the body begins to decrease when pieces of wood charcoal bones fossil etc from the prehistoric period are found it is possible to measure the remaining c14 in a laboratory by measuring the remaining c14 in the object we learn how old the object is This scientific method of determining the approximate age of an object is known as the C14 dating method. There are few other dating methods, but the C14 dating method is the one most frequently used. Once the age of the ancient object is determined with the help of this and other dating methods, it is possible to determine the period of the culture to which this object belonged. then it can be placed on the unilinear timeline as the tree grows in height the trunk also grows in girth a new rings appears for every year of the growth of the girth the rings can be seen when the tree is cut if we count the rings we came to know the age of the tree this can also be used to determine the age of the wooden artifact this method is known as the tree ring method that means dendrochronology